Oh, we're in the end game now. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Yes, friends, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that, mate. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the final days of the transfer window. Exciting times, but it's been exhausting times, and I'm sure, like me, friends, you guys are just waiting for that transfer window to slam shut, as it so often does. And we can all take a big sigh of relief and just focus on the football and Pochettino's Chelsea project. Still, there's lots of stories going on and we're here to cover that today. The near Dortmund move for Lukaku. What's going on with the Roma loan? Is there could be an option to buy there? Also, Chelsea putting in additional work to sign Ivan Tony. Kukurea, hmm? Is he going to Manchester United? We'll talk about it here. Stay to the end, friends. Strap yourselves in. Thank you for your uh, interactions. Uh, liking and subscribing, I do uh, feel gratitude, a great deal of gratitude to those of you who continue with me here in the channel. So, let's jump in. Alright then, let's start off with Lukaku. Uh, interestingly though, he nearly went to Dortmund. Or no, sorry, he didn't nearly go to Dortmund. Dortmund made, made a move to sign him. Football at London writes, although a move to Roma appears to be extremely close, reports suggest that Borussia Dortmund entered the race to sign Romelu Lukaku late on. The player has said to have no interest in moving to Germany, though, and would be uh, back in Italy extremely soon. So we know he loves Italy. He just wants to stay in Italy. I find this kind of interesting, like, Dortmund are good, they're pretty good, granted now, especially, you know, Harry Kane's in, in Bayern Munich, and they, you know, they've won two out of two, and Kane's got, what, three goals and at least one assist in the first two games, you know, Bayern, although Tuchel seemingly made Bayern Munich worse <laughs> when he arrived, uh, with Harry Kane now, I think they're just going to walk the Bundesliga, but despite that, you'd still look at Dortmund, and because they ended level on points of Bayern last season, you'd think you'd have a better chance winning a league title with Dortmund than with Roma and Serie A, and of course, um, Dortmund will be playing in the Champions League, so... But still, it's, it's your lifestyle, it's your choice. He wants to go to Roma. And Fabrizio Romano writes this on his Twitter. Roma want Lukaku deal done today. Negotiations took place on Sunday night, last night, of course, with Chelsea and the player uh, side after 5 million uh, euro loan proposal fee. There was conflicting reports about this. Chelsea wanted 8 to 10 million pounds. I thought that was very fanciful. Um, Roma have offered 5 million euros. It's really not much. But but the a big important part of this loan is he goes to play football somewhere that maybe he can sign for permanently. Chelsea don't pay his wages and they get a few quid. That's at this point what you're trying to clutch at here. Roma are really pushing to get this sealed. Um, no mandatory buy clause included uh, in the deal. No, so there isn't an a, a, a obligation to buy... But there is suggestions that there will be um, an option to buy, just not a, uh, a, a, you know, an obligation to buy. If he does really well and wants to stay and Mourinho decides to stay there longer and it seems like a marriage that works and he scores a bunch of goals, just let it, let it get done. Let it be over, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know what I mean? Like, let, just let it be, let it be done. Go and score some goals. Have fun. And who knows? You know... Why not have a crack at the title? I mean, they're beginning... How, how, they didn't do very well last season. I don't think they're going to have a crack at the title. But who knows? As much as Chelsea fans are understandably frustrated uh, with Lukaku and resent him, I would like him to go and win the Scudetto for Roma. For the, you know, the really, really outside chance they have. Are they better than the top teams? They're certainly not better than Milan. They probably won't be better than Juve, who haven't got any uh, any European competitions. They're not better than Lazio, etc., etc., Napoli. So, yeah, they won't. But if they have a miracle Scudetto win, they'll buy them. Um, that'll be good for us, won't they? They'll just buy them, and it will be a problem off our hands. Certainly very interesting how he nearly went to Dortmund, though. Kind of like 
blew my mind a little bit. Staying on an attacker, uh, Sky Sports have reported that Chelsea don't want to pay any more than £40 million for Brennan Johnson and have called their interest. Of course, guys, this is an absolutely big story for Chelsea. Massive story um, towards the end of the window. Of course, the window shuts on Friday, today being Monday. This is the one final signing, not Brennan Johnson per se, but this profile of player, a sort of versatile attacker that can feel comfortable on either side uh, of the pitch as well as playing, you know, in behind the striker. Whether it's, you know, we spoke about Ray and Cherky recently, um, not necessarily dead in the water. Brennan Johnson, Tottenham are looking at him as well. There is, you know, of course, Kudus is off to West Ham, which is a weird one for me. Weird one for me. But, um, yeah, man. So, who is it going to be? I don't think it's going to be Bradley Barcola, the other Leon player. I mean, I think a name will pop up and we'll all probably know who the guy is. And we'll be like, oh, yeah. I reckon. Maybe. I just have a feeling that's going to happen. Fabrizio Romano, again, very much asserted... The same of what Ben Jacobs is saying. Watch Chelsea the final few days. Chelsea are going to make serious moves. Outgoings, of course. If they, if we, if we relinquish ourselves of both Romelu Lukaku and Mark Kukurea's wages for a season, that's good. I know it's boring business accounting stuff, but it's massive for the books, especially in when Chelsea have done all this big spend. Get these guys out. Look, no disrespect to Kukurea. We're going to talk to him in a in a minute. Great talent, and he's. Apparently, well, seemingly a really cool, fun guy that everyone likes, the teammates, you know, like really like a good guy, you know. So, um, but, you know, if they're not playing, then you don't want to pay them massive, massive wages. So, yeah, in terms of a, an attacker, obviously keep it locked. We're going to be covering this story very, very closely and relatively meticulously as the news pops. So if you want to hear about who's Chelsea's final attacker going to be as we signed before the end of the transfer window, do hit the bell when you subscribe. But uh, for the moment, no Brennan Johnson. We've called our interest. So let's talk about Kukra. We did a video about this yesterday. Go and watch it if you want my full opinion on why I think this is a good move, loading him to a rival in Manchester United. I'll go into detail for that. Fabrizio Romano tweets, Manchester United and Chelsea spoke on Saturday about Mark Kukurea loan deal as revealed Sunday the following day. He understands Chelsea are open to letting him go on loan, but only if their conditions are met. Uh, of course, Chelsea want Manchester United to cover his salary in its entirety, in, in its entirety and they also need to pay a loan fee. Uh, it's up to Manchester United. They've got three options for left back. Apparently, one is also including Marcus Alonso, which is quite funny. Um, I kind of don't want them to get Alonso because he'd score a load of goals for them. And I don't like that. I just don't like that, you know. Uh, but but Mark Kukurea, um, they'll... Okay, so Manchester United will think they're in a really strong negotiating position here because they'll be like, what? You've played three Premier League games and he's not had one Premier League minute yet. You bring in on Martin. We know your first choice is Chilwell. Um, just loan him to us and we'll pay his wages because, you know, we know he's on high wages. We're going to be like, no, 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 no. We might want to play him. You want him? You can have him for a season. But on our terms, baby girl, loan fee, whatever that is, it's probably just a few million quid. And Manchester United have got that mega P, though. They get fleeced all the time. Don't worry, guys. We often do, too, especially when we go down to Brighton. But, yeah, no one really get, no one really quite gets fleeced like Manchester United. Like, historically as well, like, over the last, like, 20-plus years, 30 years even, they always get, um, well, I'd say 20 years, they always get fleeced. Um, so, it's because they got the money. They are... The biggest footballing institution in England. They got a lot of revenue. And you can afford to give us a few quid for Mark Kukurea. Shaw's out injured. It makes sense. It'll probably be quite good for them. And that's why Chelsea fans will be worried. But again, high wages being paid for a guy not featuring. His asset value depreciating by sitting on the bench. All that will be sorted out by him being loaned to Manchester United. All right, something I want to talk about. The ChelseaChronicle.com cites Cy Phillips's substack regarding Ivan Tony, the 27-year-old English striker. Now, you haven't seen much of this in the headlines, but I've been speaking about it a few times here and there because um, I looked at reputable sources. I deem, I think Cy Phillips is excellent. Also, um, Felix Johnson, I believe, um, has his own inside sources spoken about the English striker Ivan Tony. And how um, 
our co-sporting director, Paul Wynn Stanley, is very, very interested in him. Um, the Chelsea Chronicle writes, um, according to well-respected uh, journalist Simon Phillips, over the weekend, Chelsea are trying to jump the queue to sign Ivan Tony in the January transfer window. Of course, he's banned until January, which is coincidentally the opening of the transfer window. He explained that the Blues are doing the most groundwork for a potential deal in the next window. As it stands, Brentford, the Brentford forward is currently serving a football ban, of course. And when January comes, he can play football again and also transfer. You just hope he keeps himself fit. Um... Tony's band comes fresh off the season, uh, fresh off his best season. Yeah, he scored 20 Premier League goals, which is absolutely incredible for a Brentford striker. And um, also, I said before on a recent video, his penalty record is near immaculate. I think he's only ever missed one penalty for Brentford. And looking at this Chelsea team, I don't think we have a glaringly obvious... You know, we had Eden Hazard, we had Jorginho, uh, you know, your bankers... We don't have a banker right now. And it's good for a striker to be on penalties. Yes, yes, yes. I love Nico Jackson. I think he's wicked. And if by January, Nico Jackson has 10 Premier League goals and five assists and he just never looks like he's going to get injured, fine. Whatever, don't drop whatever it would take, probably 80 million quid to buy Ivan Tony from Brentford. I just think Nico Jackson's excellent and I just don't want to put too much pressure on him if he's got a few goals. But he can, you can have, Chelsea Football Club can have two good strikers. Say it quietly. I know we, I know, I know we're used to having no good strikers, but touch wood, we'll be back in Europe the Champions League next season, again, fifth place might quali might get you qualification for the Champions League le next season with the new rules. Chelsea can finish fifth and above, considering we've got no Europe and we look like we're getting better under Poch. It's not a sensational thing to say. In Europe, you can have two good strikers. You could have Nico Jackson and Ivan Tony. I'm not forgetting about Armando Bria. We need, it's just, we're not sure yet, are we? And bearing in mind, this is January, so we've got to see what's happening. Uh, yes, Nkunku can play up front, and maybe in a pinch he will still do that, even if you buy an Ivan Tony. But he is also can play his preferred position in the 10, or indeed off the left. And the, our, our strikers are all like 22 years old as well. Ivan Tony is 27. He could represent that senior figure that you, that's a bit of a banker, and he just works really hard. Again, I'm not um, I'm not basically saying no to Nico Jackson. I'm the I'm on the biggest Nico Jackson fan, super fan train at the moment. I'm driving the train. Choo-choo. So I'm very, very excited about him. But I've always loved Ivan Tony. I think the fact how he got 20 Premier League goals in that Brentford side is nothing short of sensational. Only Haaland and Kane scored more. And I think you put him in a better team that dominate possession more. I think we'll gobble up the goals. Um, yeah, man. So it's very, very interesting to read that continued reports that Ivan Tony is being considered. Right, gang, I'm really interested in learning your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. I just want to take a moment to um, explain to you that I'm doing short-form content now on my social media, at Football Yannick on Instagram, at football.yannick on TikTok. So if you feel like you enjoy short-form content, and if you use those social media apps, please do follow me. I'm trying to get a few more followers on the TikTok. I got a reel of, like, or a TikTok, rather, with 10,000 plays. Yeah, I've only got, like, 320 followers. What's up with that? Come on, guys. Follow me. And, yeah, man, I, people are really... Thank you to everyone who from on here who's watched uh, my other channel, Football Yannick, a YouTube channel, Football Yannick, uh, that's enjoying it. I really do... Obviously, nothing will come close to speaking about Chelsea as a Chelsea fan. But like you, many of you guys, I'm a football fan, so I like talking about other content as well. Of course, I spoke about the... Liverpool win in the Van Dyke red card yesterday. I was, the previous upload, I spoke about how Arsenal fans are already turning on Kai Havertz and how do you solve Kai Havertz and stuff like that. So people don't want to hear that here. They don't want to hear Chelsea stuff here, but you can watch my opinion on all this other stuff on my sister channel, Football Yannick. So do check it out. Anyway, guys, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for the support, as always. I do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, see you back here very soon. Peace.